Hi there, this is Mo Volans for Tuts Plus, and this is one of two tutorials and two quick tips that I'm going to be completing before Christmas Day is upon us. So you should see these coming up over the next couple of weeks, um, over the festive period. And this one is Logic Pro 10 related, and we're going to be looking at uh, track stacks, which I think is just a really great feature in Logic Pro 10. So if you're thinking about coming to Logic, or you're already a Logic user, or maybe you've not upgraded to Logic Pro 10 yet, this is one of the reasons why I think you should. Um, it's a very useful feature, and I'm going to probably show you three different ways of using it, and really show you that they're not just uh, simply for grouping tracks together. Okay, so here we've got a mix, and I'll just play you back some of it, so like a transmix, that I did for a client. And you can see I'm already using a fair amount of track stacks here. Uh, now you have to forgive me because this isn't the most tidy mix in the world, but any way you can see this gap and see some, I've used a track stack, okay? And generally it's for instruments or for groups of instruments that the client wanted like specific focus on, that they wanted work doing on. So you can see the leads were stacked, the drums were stacked, which is a pretty obvious choice, the basses and this arpeggio here as well. And I think the vocals as well, yeah, down here. Okay, so what I did was, and let me just turn this down in my cans a little. What I did was, I, I'll go to the mixer, I stacked them so that I could process them together. So you can see some de and some compression on there, uh, an API channel strip on the drums, or the lead, I think. And so, yeah, here's, here's a drum treatment here. Some Neve treatment and some pull tech. Okay, so there wasn't much work that needed doing, really. But what it does allow you to do is, in a busy mix like this, focus on groups of instruments. And I'm going to show you how to do that now, and the different two different kinds of stacks that you could use while doing this. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to group all the effects together. Now, in the days of Logic 9, we could have, you know, just soloed these or whatever. And they could have just been thrown into, uh, thrown into a group. So you can hear all these effects going off. If I zoom in, you can probably see where they are. Crashes and reverses, etc. Lots of noise. I didn't feel I really needed to group these. They were all at decent relative levels. But if you did, you would go to the mixer, and this is, this is what you would have done in Logic 9. You would grab all these tracks and you would probably route them to a new bus. So that does allow you to control things with one, um, one fader and it does allow you to process them. Uh, but if you really want to have complete control, you now can use a track stat. So if you press control and click on any one of the selected tracks, and I selected them all with shift by the way, you can then go to create track stack in the contextual menu here. You'll again then get this little option box that comes up and the useful thing about it is it sort of gives you a little bit of a rundown about what each one is. Now I'm going to go to folder stack first and it says this is a basic track that lets you mute solo and control volume from the main track. Select this option to organize tracks. So if you don't really need to process them together and you don't really need to automate them together or um, have them actually go through a physical output but you just want to organize them into a folder, we can do that. So let's see what happens. It automatically um, gives us this sort of sub one track it says here and you can see there's a load of parts in there. So this might actually be quite useful for these because we didn't need to process them, we didn't need to change the level um, of them individually. Um, and it's quite nice because you can just open the track stack, there you go, and it's a nice folder. So if you want to make the mix a little bit more simple, and now it is, there you go, you've done it. And we could call that effects stack. And you can solo it, and you can go to the mixer and alter the level of it, but there's no, you can't see any metering, it's just a simple volume control. Still pretty useful stuff, and you'll also notice um, there is automation, there's no pan, and there's no um, insert point here. There's no, there's no, nowhere where you can put um, effects inserts. It's completely blanked out. 
That's because it's not really a real audio track, okay? It's just a simple organizational tool, really. So let's undo that, and I'll show you the alternative. So we're back where we were. We've got our tracks selected. We're going to hit the contextual menu. So I'm going to hit Control and click. And I'm going to go to Create Track Stack again. For some reason, I'm having trouble getting my mouth around that one. <laughs> create Track Stack. There you go. Summing Track is the alternative to our folder stack. And it says a multi-purpose track stack that mixes its subtracks and can be saved as a patch. This type, this type can also record and play back MIDI or remote control recording or audio only subtracks. Select this option to both organize and submix tracks. Now the MIDI part we're going to get into in a second, but let's stick with audio. So let's pick this and straight away it sort of looks the same, but you'll notice it doesn't close the tracks up. We've now got something called sum six rather than sub six. And we can call this effects stack, same thing. And let's unmute it. In fact, let's take the solo off. There we go. And if we go to the mixer, things are going to look pretty different now. Okay. So there's our effects stack, and you can see that we've still got all our effects open. Now, this doesn't really change unless you close it in the arrange page. I wish, wish you could do that on the mixer as well. I wish there was a little arrow here that you could just close and open. But you have to go to the uh, the arrange section and do it. And you'll notice they, they open and close, but you don't really get a huge sense that they are part of this stack. It would be nice if there was some kind of divider that showed you which tracks in the mixer were part of this stack. Maybe they'll get around to that. Who knows? Because it shows you nicely in the arrange page if you look here and you zoom in. You get this nice little graphic that shows you which tracks are part of the stack, okay? But in the mixer, you can't see that. But with it open, or closed in fact, um, you get some um, inserts available and it gives you a compressor and an EQ as standard. Let's just get rid of those. So if you wanted to insert, you know, a filter or a, an EQ, I'm just going to go with a, uh, let's say a Cambridge um, EQ, you know, if you wanted to filter some bottom end off this, quickly do that. And it's a really nice way of summing everything. You've got automation, you've got pan, you've got level, you've got everything that you would have um, on a standard track. And that is truly summed through this section here, through this. Uh, it's really like using groups, but it's much faster. And I like the way you can fold them away as well. So you've both got, you've got the organizational thing of a, of a folder and you've got the summing of a group sort of rolled into one. So they're really the two ways that you can use your track stacks um, in audio and in the mix. And you can see that it's very useful when you're applying things like vocal treatments. I was able to add some uh, processing, like some, some compression and some de uh to the same track, about four or five dope vocal tracks, uh, which was pretty useful. And the same with the drums and the bass and everything else. So that's very nice. And I'm gonna now show you the alternative uh, use of these tracks, and I'm going to build something from scratch to sort of show you um, how you can use these track stacks with MIDI. Okay, so here we are back in a fresh project with a very simple MIDI melody hooked up to an ES2 synth. About as simple as it gets, it's in factory default mode, so just a really straight saw wave. Nothing special here at all, no effects. It's just really to demonstrate the technique. Um, let's say that we wanted to layer this synth with another sound. Now, in the days of Logic 9, you would probably copy the part, and that would be instrument 2, uh, and you would probably then go ahead and copy the MIDI, so maybe we would, I don't know, it all gets a bit confusing, but we would hit Alt and Shift, and you'd have a, a an alias, so if you edit this one, uh, it would edit this one, and then you can change the synth maybe uh, to something else. Uh, and there's the layer. So it's not too slow or anything. It's not like it was a tedious, horrible process, but it, it could have been better because ultimately what you've got is now you've got several MIDI parts. So you have to remember to copy these aliases and you have to remember that if you want to change one, it's not the real part or you have to have two originals and... Yeah, so that, that gets a little confusing once you get into the, the, the logistics of arrangement. Um, but let's just get rid of that for now and go back to where we were. Um, and I'll show you how you can use track stacks to simplify and streamline this process. So if we have our simple part playing back, 
and we then make a new synth and let's go ahead and do that let's make a new software instrument and i'd like to go with something third party so let's use the poly 6 great and now i'm going to track stack these two synthesizers now we want a summing track and now these are part of the same track stack now if i play it back nothing's going to change but if i grab this midi and put it at the top of the stack right on the sum it now tr triggers anything inside that track stack which is just a really nice thing and it's not just midi playback like that and midi files but if i actually select the the root and play it it'll actually play back all the synths inside the stack. So to Ableton users and uh, Reason users, I nearly said record users, Reason users, this is nothing new, you know, this is, gonna, they're gonna be like, what's a big deal? But in Logic, you would have had to have gone into the environment and you would have had to have made some tweaks that would have taken you a lot longer than this. So it's a really nice way of just being able to play multiple instruments quickly. And remember that also this is summed. So if you want to affect, uh, both of these, so let's put some delay on, some fab filter, timeless for instance. Really nice, just quick mixing of two synths. And then you've got the master, master control as well. So again, you've got that group control, group uh, channel control. You've got the organization of the track stack so you can fold it away to tidy up your instruments and just see that original MIDI part. So you could have like five or six instruments down here and then just, you know, just program the MIDI. So it's going to really tidy up your arrangement page. And then you've also got the fact that you can play back the MIDI and use a, a master MIDI part to trigger all the synths within the group. So there's really three uses for track stacks in Logic Pro 10. Hopefully that's been useful to you if you're a Logic user or thinking about coming to Pro 10 or maybe this sort of thing will tease you to come across from, you know, another, another DAW door, who knows? Anyway, let me know if this is useful. Let me know if you want to see any more Logic Pro 10 tips and tricks, and uh, I'll put up what I can. Cheers for now.